service in two hospitals in my city in the past, not, not now. And I've been working in worldwide medical conferences, all emphasizing to treat the patient as a whole in the energy point of view and not only the patient symptoms. And today I will present a study, the first study entitled The Importance of Understand Foods and water energy in prevention of hospital infection and treatment of all kinds of disease. This presentation is based on Hippocrates quotes that said that it is important to consider other ancient medical traditions prior to the knowledge we have nowadays. And for this reason, we choose to develop this lecture using traditional Chinese medicine reasoning together with we have nowadays regarding food and water. Nowadays, nutrition in Western medicine is based, is, uh, based studying the composition of these nutrients in protein, carbohydrates, lipids, vitamins, calories, etc. But in traditional Chinese medicine, they emphasize the energy presented in each food and they classify the foods according to the type of energy they have. And the treatment is based on the energy disturbances presented by each patient. And the food the patient will need to eat will depend on which energy disturbance that he has. And the history of food is confused with the history of humanity. And food is health, ensuring survival, performance, and conservation of species, besides having an important role in the construction of culture in the joy of living together at the table and in the taste of being able to taste our favorite foods. Um, with, with less time for domestic activities and frequent need for food outside the home, the emergency of vast food sectors was boosted, such as restaurant fast foods and ready to eat food industry. And changes in society food consumption with the increase in consumption of industrialized food generally reaches in fat, salt, and sugar, and eating outside the home and changes in lifestyles have led to the emergency of new disease related to diet, which include chronic non-communicable disease such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and obesity. And there are different points of view between Western medicine and traditional Chinese medicine. And I will explain this difference through this metaphor of the tree. In this representation, it is special to is represented by a branch, a branch of this tree. And the leaves of each branch represent the symptoms and disease of each specialties. And in this schematic figure of the tree, Western medicine is shown by each leaf of its specialty. In Western medicine, they treat the leaf of its specialty. But what we will focus today is on the root of these trees in the energy imbalances, in the root of the tree that is leading to the different disease on this tree or different disease on the human being. In traditional Chinese medicine, various symptoms of different specialties can be treated at the same time at, as long as it addresses the root of the problem that lies below the ground of the tree, the roots that are invisible to the naked eye. And they are represented by the theory of, of the five element theory and the yin yang theory. And the part above the ground corresponds to the treatment of various symptoms of various specialties in the same time. If you treat the root, you can treat all the symptoms and all the disease at the same time, even if the doctor doesn't know that the patient had such a symptom. And in this representation, you can see that the tree is surrounded by the external pathogenic factors that it's called wind, heat, humidity, and dryness that uh, is considered the pathogenic factors that can induce the formation of disease in traditional Chinese medicine. But in Western medicine, they doesn't 
address that these factors could be the beginning of the disease. And so the focus of this presentation today is to address which could be the energy imbalances presented by each disease and what could be used regarding diet changes to improve or to cure the condition in the energy point of view and not only looking at the composition of the diet. As I told you, I'm an infectious disease specialist and have four more specialties. And during all these 28 years of my medical experience practice, I noticed that many infections could be treated without the use of any antibiotics. And if we understand the functioning of the human body as a whole, and inserted and in the environment that could receive influence for, from the external pathogenic factors such as wind, cold, dryness, humidity, and heat. And this consideration is very important because Western medicine does not address the influence of this factor, as I said before. And in this study, entitled Why Do Patients Still Catch Hospital Infections Despite the Practice of Infection Prevention? control. It's uh, my publication in April two years ago. I'm showing little changes in the hospital environment and dietary routine could improve the incidence of the formation of hospital infections because these infections in the energy point of view are considered only energy imbalances and the formation of internal heat leading to the um, infections symptoms, but it is due to the energy disturbances. And the formation of hyperemia and yellow secretion, is, uh, yellow color of the secretion, is con a considered sign of infection in Western medicine, is only a reflection of internal energy disturbances and the rebalance of this energy using a correct diet and water and other tools could treat the majority of these infections without the necessity of using antibiotics. In this publication published by me, again, in the title, in the article entitled, Is it possible to treat community acquired mosocloma infections with the same method and without the use of antibiotics? In this article I demonstrate to the four case studies, two with nosocomial infections and two with hospital infections, all of them with a history of treating these infections with many times of antibiotics with no improvement. They all have cure of their infections, only changing the dietary um, habits, taking care of the influence of the external pathogenic factors, such as wind and cold, and doing a regular acupuncture to rebalance the internal energy, such as yin, yang, qi, and blood, and taking out the heat retention. Another study of mine published entitled Invasion of Wind and Cold as Cause of Respiratory Tract Infection Outbreak in a School Kindergarten Group of Kids. I demonstrate that half of these students in a classroom were sick with the flu symptoms and the school directors received orientations about the necessity of vaccinating all the children in the school because of this outbreak. But with the only measurement of turning off the ventilator that was in the ceiling of the classroom that was generating wind and cold, all the children improved from their symptoms without the necessity of having other kinds of treatment or receive vaccination because their symptoms were caused by the entrance of the external pathogenic factors and not by the virus itself. Another study published by me concerning infectious process is the treatment of urinary tract infection. In this article entitled, Can We Treat Urinary Tract Infection Without Using Any Antibiotics? I showed that we can treat this kind of infection without using any antibiotics, using only correct foods, water, and rebalancing the internal energy and taking out the heat retention through auricular acupuncture 
an apex field blood to lactin. Several other studies were published regarding infectious process and being community or nosocomial infections. And I'm explaining the reasoning that is in the background of these infections that are in the energy point of view and not visible by the naked eye that could be the reason of all these infections manifestations. And regarding other studies about non-infectious disease, for example, in the case of diabetes, I published an article entitled, Why are diabetic patients still having hyperglycemia despite diet regulation, antiglycemic medication, and insulin? But in Western medicine point of view, the food and nutritional indication in diabetes patients are usually focused in reducing sweet and carb reduction intake. But in Traditional Chinese medicine, the diabetes is considered an energy imbalance of deficiency of yin and heat retention. It is a disharmony between yin and yang, and it is represented by yin deficiency and heat retention. Um, In this publication, I'm emphasizing and explaining which are the foods that could lead to hyperglycemia that is very different from Western medicine orientation. For you to understand the ingestion of coffee, even without sugar, um, can increase the glucose. And the ingestion of zero sugar soda can increase the glucose in diabetic patient. And even drinking cold water or milk can increase the glucose. Another food that is usually not recommend to avoid in the consumption of in diabetes patients that can increase is eggs, chocolate, fried food, alcoholic beverages, coconuts, and the pepper can induce the hyperglycemia too. All these kinds of foods can lead to the energy imbalances and leading to hyperglycemia symptoms. Another study published by me entitled Energy Alteration as the Underlying Cause of Primary Hypertension, I'm explaining what could be the reason that could lead to hypertension in the energy point of view, invisible by the naked eye because in Western medicine, they don't know exactly the reason to explain the formation of primary hypertension. And in Western medicine, what they usually orientate the patient are to reduce the salt consumption. But in traditional Chinese medicine, the depends on the energy that is causing the formation of hypertension. And other kinds of food should be avoided, such as fried food, chocolate, honey, dairy products, alcoholic beverages, cold water, that could induce or maintaining the hypertension depends on the root of the energy imbalances that is leading to hypertension. And another study published by me entitled The Importance of Correcting Energy Imbalances in the Prevention and Treatment of Myocardial Infarction. I am demonstrating that the treatment of the patient with myocardial infarction is usually a local treatment addressing the blocked artery. And, but in this publication, I'm showing through two case reports that this kind of patients usually have a deficiency in energy in all the chakra center meridians. And the replenishment of these energies are important to prevent and treat them because the lack of energy could lead to blood stagnation even without any arterial blockage. And the formation of the cholesterol plaque in the arterial walls are usually caused by phlegm in traditional Chinese medicine. And the prevention of these disturbances are usually done orientating the patient to avoid dairy products, cold water, raw food, sweets, etc. And usually in Western medicine, what they usually orientate to avoid the formation of cholesterol is the ingestion of grease, meaty, fried, etc. And to understand why I'm saying all this difference, I will show you 
which could be the alterations that could happen in the root of the tree that I showed you in the beginning of the presentation. In the root of the tree, there are energies that circulate throughout the body inside the meridians. They can be explained by yin and yang theory and the five element theory. The yin and yang concepts are based on the idea of complementary opposites, according to the Chinese wise men that first proposed TCM theories. The yin and yang are present in everything in the universe, and they use the symbol presented in this slide and the theory behind this symbol to justify day and night, male and female, and other complementary opposites present in nature and more, more specifically in the human body. A balanced lifestyle would promote health, but this balance would be based on the internal energy state. According to traditional Chinese medicine, the human body has yin and yang energies primordial to the functioning of the body and the, distributed through several meridians throughout the body. And the second theory that based the traditional Chinese medicine reasoning is the theory of the five elements. In this theory, each element of the five element theory is represented by the fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. And they represent the heart, spleen, lung, kidney, and liver. Yeah, according to this theory, each element or organ are interconnected by the generation cycle and the control cycle. This uh, theory is different from the Western medicine theory that don't, uh, the reason they don't uh, think that each element is interconnected, but the, the, each organ in Western medicine are treated separately and they don't have this energy connection. To explain all the theory in traditional Chinese medicine, it will be very difficult in this short period. So I will briefly explain the main concepts to you to understand why the ingestion of correct food is important to maintain an equilibrium of the internal energy to achieve health. And the entrance of energy inside the body is achieved through two ways. The first is the consumption and the absorption of nutrients by the spring and pancreas or the, the fifth chakra. And the, uh, through the respiration through the fourth chakra. The first step in our orientation I usually do to my patient is to orientate to avoid food that could imbalance the spring pancreas meridian or the fifth chakra because if this meridian is imbalanced, no absorption of nutrients will occur appropriately leading to the formation of less blood and causing an anemia state. And the patient can have anemia even with normal laboratory exams. And the food that can balance the screen pancreas meridian are dairy products, raw food, cold water, sweets, and it's excessive worry. And in this slide, I'm showing the five phases that the person progress from health to disease. In these first three phases, there are energy imbalances and the patient have symptoms. But the laboratory exams are normal in the phase four. There are alterations in the laboratory exams, but the disease is still curable. And in the phase five, there are laboratory alterations, but the disease, the disease is considered incurable. Western medicine usually does the diagnose only in the phase four and five when there are laboratory alterations. But in my last publication about cancer, uh, I don't consider cancer an irreversible cellular lesion because in this last publication, uh, this uh, it was this week, 
uh, I'm showing some treatment that we, do, uh, we did in my clinic that cancer patients uh, could have uh, a cure only doing um, energy imbalance, balances the internal energy and the replenishment of the chakra's energy and the trans, um, leading to the transformation from the uh, phase five to four or to phase five to three. And there are some clinical case reports that we are showing this publication, very interesting, that is not considered uh, irreversible. And we are explaining this in this article. In this study, I presented in acupuncture research conference in 2015 at the Harvard Medical School in Boston, United States, entitled Acupuncture Viewed Holistically Can Treat All Diseases at the Same Time. And in these studies, I'm affirming the necessity of treating the energy imbalances between yin, yang, qi, and blood. And if we look at the nutritional point of view, the foods that could imbalance these four energies are uh, yin and yang are the energy that is produced in the kidney, and the kidney is considered the second chakra. And the foods that could be imbalanced, the, the, the kidney energy is coffee, soda, and mati tea. And the um, food that can imbalance the production of blood is the uh, consumption of uh, raw food, um, cold drinks, uh, consumption of dairy products, and sweets. And if you have a balanced state between blood and yin yang, you, ha you will have a health chi. And it, this is a consequence, chi is a consequence of a balanced state of blood yin yang. yang. And when there are energy imbalances between these four energies, for example, if you have deficiency of one of, or a combination of these four energies, you can produce internal heat formation that is the cause of the formation of many diseases in traditional Chinese medicine, such as diabetes, hypertension, uh, anxiety, panic syndrome, and uh, dermatitis, infectious process, cancer, etc. Uh, to finalize my presentation, I would like to say some considerations about water. The energy of water is cold, and that is why in Chinese culture, they used to ingest water around 32 degrees Celsius, uh, never cold or icy, very common in Western habits. Inside our body, the temperature can cause now, inside our body, the temperature is around 36 or 37 degrees. And if, you, if we ingest cold water temperature, it can cause an internal energy disharmony, leading to the formation of that internal heat. And for this reason, people who usually ingest cold water has dry mouth mouth due to the internal heat formation that consumes the internal water. And the, here is the quantity of water to ingest every day is very important. And depending on the age of the person, the percentage of water that corresponds in the body will vary. As you can see in this slide, children has more percentage in water compared to adults and in older persons. There are variations between studies about how much water a person should ingest per day. And the normally I tell the patient is around one liter of water for each 25 kilos of uh, weight. But there are other studies that orientate to drink one liter per each 30 kilos of body weight. Why it is important to drink this amount of water per day? In the energy point of view, water is the main energy of the kidney, and the kidney is responsible for the production of yin and yang energy. 
And if you drink less amount of water that is recommended for our body's weight, there will be generate an imbalance in the yin and yang formation and this in this cycle and it will cause the disequilibrium of this cycle and it will begin the, the disease. As kidney is responsible for many functions inside the body, one of the most important for men is the sexual function. And, and for a woman, kidney is responsible for maintaining the youth. And what is that is why it's important for them to drink water in adequate amount. And before finalizing my presentation, I would like to address the importance to consider other both kinds of medicine in regard to nutrition and foods. And the conclusion of this study is that it is important to know the, the components of its food, but it is also important to understand the energy of its food in the prevention and treatment of diverse of disease. And the association between Western and traditional Chinese medicine is important to understand in the deepest level the influence of diet in the formation of this disease and it is prevention. This is another Hippocrates quote. Healing is like it to time and sometimes also to circumstance. Make our food your medicine and your medicine your food. Thank you for listening. If you have any doubts, please ask me now. Or here is my email address, you can email me. Thank you. Do you have any question? Hello. Yes, uh, it's time for questions. Any questions for Huang Wiling? So I guess no questions. No. Thank you so much. Can I do my second presentation? Yes, now? yes, yes. Now I will begin my second presentation about could our eating habits be affecting our sleeping and how can we treat it without using drugs? Nowadays, 36% of Brazilian population suffer from insomnia and it corresponds for more than 30, uh, 73 million people. And people nowadays sleep 20% less than they did 100 years ago. And more than 30% of the population suffer from insomnia. One in three people suffer from some form of insomnia during their lifetime. Uh, approximately 10 million people in the United States use prescription sleep aids and people who suffer from sleep deprivation are 27% more likely to become overweight or obese. And there are also a link between weight gain and sleep apnea. And in China, the prevalence of insomnia was 15%. This number is way smaller than in Brazil, where 36% of people suffer from insomnia. And younger Chinese adults appear to suffer from more insomnia than older adults. And the prevalence of insomnia in China is lower than those reported in Western countries, but similar to those in Asia countries. In Western medicine, the protocol for treating patients with insomnia is first advised changes in sleeping habits and diminishing daily life stress. When those measures do not work, the use of medication is recommended. Even though the use of sleeping pills is not recommended for more than weeks, many patients use, use them in a long-term relationship. 
And in my daily practice, I realized some of the patients suffering from insomnia do not have beneficial results with the use of inducing sleeping medications. And the results many times are not satisfactory and can induce many side effects. Now I will talk a little about the approach for insomnia in traditional Chinese medicine. I use the metaphor of the tree that I explained to you in the first presentation. I won't repeat. In Western medicine, insomnia is treated in the leaf level, but today we will address the root level of this tree. I will not repeat again the yin yang yang. Here on this slide, we are showing the yin yang yang diagram. The ancients observed two phases of constant cyclo cyclical change where yin changes to yang and where yang changes to yin. From 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., the yang energy is increasing until 12 p.m. for it's on the uppermost yang. And from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., it corresponds to yang within yin. From 6 p.m. to 12 a.m., the yin energy is increasing until 12, 12 a.m., corresponds to the utmost yin. And from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., the yin energy became young again, restarting the cycle. In the Yellow Emperor, a book who proposed most of the basic principles of traditional Chinese medicine, there is a sentence which summarizes perfectly the relationship be between yin and yang concepts and the sleep. When yang is depleting and yin is abundant, when eyes are closed, and when is is depleting and yang is predominant, when is awake. And uh, in order for yin and yang to circulate throughout the meridian, qi and blood is required. Qi is the vital energy of the body and it flows through 12 principal meridians within the body in the 24 hour cycle. When she flows through a meridian, principal meridian, it takes around two hours to vitalize and strengthen the organ system associated to that particular meridian. After vitalizing the organ with energy, she will pass through the next meridian, fortifying him as well. And the ideal time to sleep in accordance to the meridian clock is from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. If, you sleep, if your sleep is disturbed at certain hour repeatedly, it's an indication that the pair organ system may require your attention. And the next slide, we will talk briefly about the meridians vitalized during the course of 24 hour cycle. And the cycle initiates on the lungs between 3 and 5 p.m between 5 to 7 p.m. comes the best time to evacuate because she is passing through the large intestine. Next, the maximum energy is in the stomach between 7 to 9 a.m., the best moment to eat. And from 9 to 11 a.m., the maximum of energy is on the spleen pancreas, and the energy of the body is totally focused on digestion. And between 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., the maximum of the energy is on the heart. Here. A funny fact is that 70% of heart attacks occur during this period when the chi energy is flowing through the heart meridian, according to BCM. And from 1 to 3 a.m. p.m., the maximum energy is on the small intestine, and from 3 to 5 is on the bladder, and 5 to 7 is on the kidney, 7 to 9 is on the pericardium, 9 to 11 the triple burner, and in the 11 to 1 a.m. and 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. is in the glowbladder liver, well, meridian. Uh, this is uh, very common. We have patients that sleep earlier, 
and wake up at, during this period because there could be an energy imbalances or in the gallbladder or in the liver energy meridian. And, uh, and according to traditional Chinese medicine, to figure out the energy basis cause of insomnia, it's important for the doctor to observe the pattern of the sleep of the patient and compare it with the pattern of the qi flowing through the meridian in the day cycle. For example, if the patient is able to sleep easily and then wakes up between 1 to 3 a.m., this demonstrates an imbalance in the liver meridian. And the liver meridian has a property of cleansing the blood and processing of waste. And from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m., the gallbladder and liver meridian have their maximum of energy. And when the patient is not able to fall asleep in between 11 to 3 p.m., this shows that the waste is not being processed by his liver and it acts an, an, as an irritant to the body causing insomnia and frayed nerves. If, the, if he wakes up between three to five in the morning, this means that he has an energy imbalance in the lungs meridian and the lung imbalances with feeling of sadness and wrong diet. Part of traditional Chinese medicine literature demonstrates that insomnia is a disturbance in the Shen energy. Shen is one of the three treasures that constitute life. Jin, the essence, Qi, the life force, and the Shen, the spirit. TCM views the spirit as an integral part of our health and our well-being and cultivation of the spirit is considered essential for health maintenance. Shen can be translated as the spirit or mind and implies our consciousness, mental, mental functions, mental health, vitality, and our presence. In this slide, you can see the different classifications of mechanism of insomnia according to traditional Chinese medicine. You can have a disharmony between kidney and heart, deficiency of heart and spleen, retention of qi in the gallbladder and mucosity disturbances or food retention. And here are the disharmony between kidney and heart. Uh, one of the cause of blood deficiency is due to nutrient absorption problems, very common in people who consume a lot of raw food, dairy products, uh, sweets, and cold water. And these foods are very common in Western diets and are often cons considered healthy food. Internal heat buildup occurs when there is an excessive of energy or a direct way or a deficiency of energy on an indirect matter. The food that cause internal heat formation are fried foods, egg, uh, chocolate, honey, coconut, alcoholic beverages, etc. And eating correctly gives us the energy we need to complete ta tasks, strength, our immune system against disease, improve cognitive functions, heal wounds, repair bones and tissue. Too often, healthy eating is rarely thought about when it comes to sleep. One of the problems patients usually have to sleep is associated to food stagnation. According to the teachings of traditional Chinese medicine, the gastrointestinal tract stops working after 6 p.m. Therefore, if we eat after this time of the day, the body will have no energy to perform the, the digestion and what can be caused, one of the cause of insomnia. And with my patient, I advise them to dine earlier, preferable between 5 to 6 p.m. And eat, eating food which have in energy 
that such as those that grow under the ground, such as potatoes, carrots, yams, onions, radishes, etc. And red, red meat should be avoided at, at, during the night. And it's very common for the patient to have insomnia because it has an erroneous eating habits, especially at night. Food that have young energy can imbalance the normal cycle of young, and young energy flow during the day and night. And these foods are those that grow up the earth, such as rice, beans, uh, corns, etc. And all these foods should be avoided during the night. And this study I show you in the first presentation, which I won't show you again, this uh, between the energy between yang chi and blood should be in balance to treat the insomnia. And now I would like to briefly talk about the water temperature. I said in the first presentation, if you uh, <clears throat> usually consume cold water or icy water, you will imbalance the spleen and pancreas meridian that uh, is responsible for the absorption of nutrients, leading in this case the formation of less blood that can lead to less nutrients in all cells and organs and tissues in our body, leading to a deficiency in energy in all these systems. And it's also important to talk briefly about the importance of being careful when orientating about the use of herbs and teas. For example, in Brazil, it's common for a patient to use chamomile tea to, to use when you have insomnia, but in traditional Chinese medicine, chamomile tea can induce the formation of heat in the gallbladder meridian and leading to insomnia. And that's why I usually advise my patient to don't to drink chamomile tea to do, uh, especially in the, the night to prevent the formation of energy imbalance inducing insomnia. And when the origin of symptoms of the patient is in the systemic problem of yin and yang energy, the intake of medication for sleeping want to treat the cause of the problem. And because this is the Arne Schultz law, uh, when you use the sleeping inducing medication, uh, here are uh, one law created in 1888 by two researchers in Chile. And they said that when we use high concentrated medication, we will reduce the vital energy of this patient. And in traditional Chinese medicine, when you induce the reduction of the energy, you will increase the formation of internal heat that can induce the insomnia. And that's why when I need to use some medication, I prefer to use the high diluted medication that can improve the organic process and, um, and treat the energy deficiencies that they usually, usually have, uh, reducing the formation of this internal heat that the one of the cause of insomnia in the energy point of view. Ah, uh, in this slide, uh, I'm showing the, the uh, regular points that I usually use to treat insomnia. Here are the two situations, one with apex ear bloodletting and one without apex ear bloodletting. But in my daily practice, when the patient has insomnia, uh, it's important to do the apex ear bloodletting to take out the heat retention that is usually causing the, the energy disharmony leading to insomnia. Here are the anxiety point, the kidney point, the gallbladder, liver, spleen, large intestine, uh, heart, uh, lung and heart. And here are the specific point for treating insomnia. Here for the anxiety, here is the occipital point that you usually use to treat insomnia too. And here is how we use, we do the apex blood letting. 
only to taking out of three to five drops of blood to reduce the heat retention. And here I will explain to you the one research I did in the, my patient in the clinic. And here it's only to, to show you a questionnaire that we did uh, uh, in a patient. And uh, when 83% had insomnia, but 17% did not. And in this presentation, in this table, we are showing that the majority of the patient had 80% of the patient uh, had improvement of the insomnia in the first month of the treatment. And um, here are the evaluation they did for the insomnia. Uh, the majority of the patient uh, responded that the, the uh, regular acupuncture treatment for insomnia treatment were excellent or good. And uh, only one patient responded that 2.7% um, need to hospitalization due to insomnia, but the majority didn't need hospitalization. And the, the, here is a chart demonstrating that um, the majority of the patients in my city, they, when they have insomnia, they are going direct to treat with acupuncture and weekly acupuncture, but almost 20% of them did a previous treatment with sleeping inducing pills. And, um, and the majority recommend their weekly acupuncture for the treatment of insomnia. Here is the result of this um, study that 36% uh, had a completely cure, but 58% uh, uh, were improving, but uh, uh, only 5% uh, said it, uh, they feel they were not cured. But in this patient, what we notice is that they didn't do the diet orientations regarding to, to don't eat uh, uh, that kinds of food uh, to eat, uh, uh, avoid to eating young energy foods such as rice, beans, or uh, red meat in the dinner, or avoid the lasagna or uh, popcorns or corns, etc. And in this group of patients, they didn't do the diet orientation. That's why they didn't have a good result.